Sunday, March 5th, we will start our four-week challenge. With our goal of growth this year, we will be focusing in on our marriages and relationships. We are challenging you to ask God to help you take your relationships to new levels of love, honesty, and purity, all by the grace and goodness of God. And at the end of this series on March 26th at our 6 p.m. service, we will be hosting a free mass wedding and vow renewal. So if you're looking to get married, sign up on the app or go to the marriage counter in the foyer for more details. And for the singles, we have a purity ceremony. So join us this month of March as we journey through this together, growing and learning how to love one another more fully. not be under control of your past. That's how you used to be. You used to be under control of the devil, but Jesus set you free. So now you can get some self-control. Give God some praise. We can overcome this. I'm not gonna be trapped with someone's mouth. I'm not gonna be trapped with an offender. I'm going places and I'm not gonna be a prisoner of war. Get ready, Way fam, for an awesome marriage challenge 2023, growing great marriages and relationships. Kicking off Sunday, March 5th, we will start our four week challenge. With our goal of growth this year, we will be focusing in on our marriages and relationships. We are challenging you to ask God to help you take your relationships to new levels of love, honesty, and purity, all by the grace and goodness of God. And at the end of this series on March 26th at our 6 p.m. service, we will be hosting a free mass wedding and vow renewal. So if you're looking to get married, sign up on the app or go to the marriage counter in the foyer for more details. And for the singles, we have a purity ceremony. So join us this month of March as we journey through this together, growing and learning how to love one another more fully. not be under control of your past. That's how you used to be. You used to be under control of the devil, but Jesus set you free. So now you can get some self-control. Give God some praise. We can overcome this. gonna be trapped with someone's mouth I'm not gonna be trapped with an offender I'm going places and I'm not gonna be a prisoner of war get ready way fam for an awesome marriage challenge 2023 growing great marriages and relationships kicking off Sunday March 5th we will start our four-week challenge with our goal of growth this year, we will be focusing in on our marriages and relationships. We are challenging you to ask God to help you take your relationships to new levels of love, honesty, and purity, all by the grace and goodness of God. And at the end of this series on March 26th at our 6 p.m. service, we will be hosting a free mass wedding and vow renewal. So if you're looking to get married, sign up on the app or go to the marriage counter in the foyer for more details. And for the singles, we have a purity ceremony. So join us this month of March as we journey through this together, growing and learning how to love one another more fully. not be under control of your past. That's how you used to be. You used to be under control of the devil, but Jesus set you free. So now you can get some self-control. Give God some praise. We can overcome this.
I'm not going to be trapped with someone's mouth. I'm not going to be trapped with an offender. I'm going places, and I'm not going to be a prisoner of war. Stirring us, you come on, sing it out. 
is faithful. Your promises are true. Sing that out. You are who you say you are. You do what you say you do. You are always faithful. Your promises are true. Oh, you are who you say you are. You do what you say you do.
to a God that is worthy. We're singing to a God that is full of all the power to change us, to transform us. 
We need to recognize who walked in the room when we worshiped him. We recognize you, Holy Spirit. Recognize you, Jesus. Can we give Jesus just some praise in this moment? 
the name above all names. You know, G, uh, we were taking some prayer requests earlier today from some members of the church. And, you know, we, right now we have some members of our church who are just getting some bad reports. Some of them have gotten a bad report that they have cancer. And some have gotten bad reports that family members and loved ones have passed on. And there's so much pain and there's so much heartbreak in a lot of the things that we've been going through, I think, in some of the seasons that we're in. But above any pain or above any trauma, the name of Jesus reigns higher than all of it. And this is what I mean by that. I say this to give hope. That if right now you're facing something that is hard news for you, a bad report from the doctor, there's a name that's above every other name, and that's the name of Jesus. In his name, there is healing. In his name, there's hope for you. In his name, there's a new beginning, and there's, there's, a, there's, there's a new start. How many believe that today? Can we do this in this moment as we close in worship? Can we just lift our hands? to the name of Jesus, to the one who can, the only one who can save, the only one who can set free. Just fix your eyes on him in this moment. Jesus, right now, as all of our hands are lifted to you, we give you glory and honor as the only one who can, the only way, the only one that has life and truth. You're the name above all names. You're the hope, God, in a hopeless situation. Jesus, you're the healing for the one who is dealing with cancer right now. Jesus, we speak healing over those right now. God, you're healing for the brokenhearted, for the families that have lost loved ones in this past week, God. You're healing and your hope for them, God. Jesus, you're everything that we need. Jesus, you're the name above the situation. Jesus, you're the name above depression. Jesus, you're the name above the pain and the stress and the anxiety. Jesus, you are the name. And Jesus, we give you praise tonight. And we glorify you above any problem that we face. We love you, Jesus. And we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, can we give Jesus one more shout of praise tonight? He is the name. He is the name above every other name. He's the name. Come on, come on. This is a place to be on a Wednesday night. Wouldn't you agree? Tonight is a night of breakthrough and miracle. We just want to say welcome to the Way World Outreach. This is truly a place where you'll be loved. And if this is your first time, believe this, when you come once, you are now part of the family. Welcome to the family tonight. Could you do me a favor? Find a few people around your area before you're seated. Say hello. Give them a handshake. Let them know you're excited to see them tonight. What's up, man? I oh, bless you. Bless you guys. What's up, my brother? Love you. Bless you. God bless you guys. Welcome everybody online right now, watching from all over. We know you're probably watching from out of state, out of the city, but we just want to say welcome. And we're so glad you're tuning in with us. We're so happy to have you tonight. Do us a favor, send this link to somebody. Let somebody know that they can watch with you. You can just click that share button, shoot it right over, and uh, who knows? This, you, there could be one invitation away from a breakthrough tonight. So why don't you send over that link, let somebody else watch with you. And also, if you can access the chat box, at, go in the chat box and, hey, buddy, <laughs> the little guy over here, um, go to the chat box and let us know where you're watching from. We want to hear from you. So again, we're so happy you're with us tonight. Welcome to all of our WayFam online. So happy to see you. And you could actually say hello to somebody in the chat box too. I know that you can't shake someone's hand. But you can say hi in the chat box. Say hello to some, uh, hi to somebody. <laughs> so welcome again. All right. Well, church, I got four things I want to share with you tonight. Someone say four things. Say it again. Say four things. Here are some great things that are coming up as a church. Get ready. Get ready. Tell your neighbors. Tell your neighbors. Say, get ready. We got a lot of great things coming up. So starting with number one, we are, have this Friday night, men's and women's unity night, this Friday at 7 p.m. For all the men in the place, get ready to hear an on-time word from Pastor Marco Garcia. He's going to be in the house Men, 
I would highly, highly, highly encourage you never to miss a chance when Pastor Marco gets in the room with just men. I'm telling you, you're going to receive war cry instructions on how to fight this war. As a man, don't miss out on hearing from the man of the house here, the general of this house. Get some more instruction this Friday. But also, for the ladies, we got Chrissy Frimbris who's going to be preaching to ladies this Friday. Chrissy preached a powerful word a few Wednesdays ago, so I know your ladies are in for a treat this Friday. So that's all Friday at 7 p.m. Don't miss out. Come show up for and expect a word. So, all right, number two. This Sunday, we are launching Holy Warriors. Our second wave of the year is launching this Sunday. So if you have not had a chance to jump into Holy Warriors, if you've been hearing about it and you're ready, this is the time. Even if you're saying, I'm not ready, jump in anyway. Now is the time to get discipled and to grow. So we have a session Sunday morning at 9 a.m. That doesn't work with your schedule. Then you can also come on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. We have two options for you to choose from. Get, uh, learn how to grow in your walk with God. Learn how to fight your Christian fight. Learn, uh, get set free from some past things and, and learn how to walk with God. It's going to be powerful. So that's this Sunday at 9 a.m. or Tuesday at 7 p.m. All right. So I'm going to say number three. We have our Sunday night revival services. Have that not been, has it not been an awesome night, those Sunday nights? Come expecting a powerful move of God. Mark your calendar for our next one. The next one we're going to do is on March 12th. Someone say March 12th. That's going to be our next Sunday night revival service. Mark your calendar and come ready and hungry and expecting a move of God on these Sunday nights. That's March 12th at 6 p.m. here at the Hallmark campus. All right, so I'm going to say number four. And this is a big one. Get ready for this. Can I get a drum roll, actually? This Sunday, we are launching Marriage Challenge! <laughs> Marriage Challenge 2023 is launching this Sunday at our Sunday services. This is one of the most sought after events that we do here at the Way World Outreach. It's an opportunity to restore broken relationships, but also to grow in our relationships. For married couples, for singles, and everybody in between, you do not want to miss Marriage Challenge. But also, to get the full experience, somebody say full experience. In order to get everything, you got to register. Get your packet reserved. Register right now. You can go on the app and register. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to do something very special tonight. Being that it's this Sunday, we're going to use a few minutes right now to invite, invite, invite. So we got a countdown. Go ahead and play. Play that timer. There we go. Hit play on that timer. This is what we're going to do. For three minutes, what I want you to do, I want you to scan that QR code or just go to thewayinvite.com and click the invite button. And I want you to invite as many people as you can invite in three minutes. Ready, set, go. Let's go for it. Scan that code. Invite, invite, invite. Go ahead and pull your phone out. I want you to think of neighbors. Think of the people you were just texting earlier today. Think of family that can come. Think of someone that, that you work with. Let me get out of the way for you guys. Can you guys see that code? Hey, 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 let's invite. Come on, everyone should have a phone out right now. Let's invite as many people as we can. What's the worst that can happen? They say no, okay. But well, what's the best that can happen? Who knows, you could be, they could be one invitation away from their lives being changed forever. And they'll have you to thank for that. So pull out your phone. We got a minute, 50 seconds left. Scan that QR code. Why don't I go ahead and do it too? Let me scan this code. Come on, iPhone, you're letting me down. Bang. We're getting invitations left and right. Awesome. Wow, great job, everybody. Alexis Ramirez, good job on inviting someone. Stephanie Woods, good job inviting someone. Nayeli, good job inviting someone. Alyssa, good job. Richard, good job inviting John, good job. Topaz, good job inviting Jaspi. Daryl invited Rohan, great, great job. Mom invited her daughter, great job, mom, great job. 
Denise invited Dion. Good job. Adriana just invited someone. Mia just invited someone. Come on, we got a minute left. I'm getting all the alerts right now. It's going crazy. Look how many people we're inviting. Come on, let's keep going. Let's keep it going. Let's see if we can get some more. Good job, good job, Wendy. Good job, DeAndre. Good job, Rosie. Keep it coming, guys. Let's keep inviting. Let's keep inviting. Scan that code or go to thewayinvite.com. Let's think of as many people as we can invite. Friends, family, old classmates, old coworkers. Come on, I know we got some numbers in our phone that we probably should have maybe got rid of, but maybe now's the time to invite them to church. Let's invite them. Good job, Priscilla. Good job, Richard. Good job, Daly. Come on, let's keep it going. Good job, Inez. We got 16 seconds, 15 seconds, 14. Come on, let's, let's see if we can get one more. One last one. Good job, Sue. Good job, Rosie. A few more, five seconds left. Let's get one more. Let's keep it coming, guys. Awesome job. Give yourselves a round of applause. Hundreds of invites just went out right now. Great, great job. We want to encourage you, let's pack, this, let's pack this place out. You can use the wait invite at any time, any day, and invite somebody. And when you do, they get a special code that sponsors their packet. And you're able to tell them, I help to sponsor your packet. They get a special discount code. So thank you so much for inviting. I want you to turn your attention to the screen for a great testimony of a marriage that has been transformed in our church. Go ahead and take a look at this. God bless. My name is Aditra Wallace. And my name is Vincent Wallace. We got married on Valentine's Day 2004. So we just celebrated our 19 year anniversary. And we've been together since 2000, October 2000, so almost 23 years. From getting married all the way up until we call it our hiccup that we had in 2018, we thought everything was good. You know, I would like to say that our marriage was on um, life support. While I was out of the home, um, myself and my husband had several encounters with different people from the Way, Outre Way World Outreach. And be prior to that, we had never really heard about the Way. We were going to a whole different church. I think maybe a month later, they had the marriage advance. And that's where we got our real breakthrough. And that's when I made the decision that it was time for me to come home. Because she used to always say, you know, God put us together. Well, if God puts us together, then God will keep us together. God must have a great plan for us if, if Satan is, is fighting that hard for us to leave here. My wife got up from her prayer and decided she wanted to come home. Since then, we've become, you know, altar, we're on the altar team and we've become intricate parts of, the, of, the, of this fellowship. We just completed a holy warrior together. And I'm, I'm of the belief that where, where there's unity, God will be present. Where there's separate, separation and disagreement, we're opening the door and giving access to the devil. And so the one thing that the way taught us, it educated us on how to be married, how to have a family, how to everything. Because one, one of the things that I did, I, I got out of it, was I needed to go to counseling. You know, we fell in love again. And that was the, the thing for us is that um, I did think that it was over. And I thought, you know, but God showed us a different way. The way showed us a different way. The marriage ch challenge showed us a different way. So we vowed to never miss a marriage advance, never miss the marriage challenge again, because it really, truly helped us. If we're trying to make a, a life decision, that we have to be in agreement uh, on that decision or else we won't do it. The devil tried to separate us because he knew that, you know, we were gonna be soldiers for God, we we're gonna be disciples. If I could tell anything to any of the men here, it would be that, you know, if you keep your mouth shut half the time, you'll have half the trouble. When we're listening, I, I don't listen with the idea of replying to her. I listen to my wife to understand her. And that's what I learned here at The Way. Give it up for what God did in Vincent and Aditra's life. Hi, guys. I'm gonna, we're going to take a moment now to bring our tithes and offerings. And I just wanted to share, give you a little inside pick on uh, something that happened today in Pastor, Pastor Marco's discipleship group. Now, I know a lot of us uh, may have enjoyed the snow on Sunday. How many have enjoyed, or excuse me, Saturday? How many enjoyed that snow? That was cool. Um, <laughs> what I think is amazing is that our adopt -a block team and our leadership university students went out in the snow... To, sh to preach the gospel, to share with people the love of Jesus. So that was on Saturday. And, you know, this last uh, few months, last few weeks especially, 
uh, we've been talking a lot about what we've been encountering on the streets. As you know, our teams, they go out to the toughest neighborhoods in San Bernardino. We don't go to the, the nicest neighborhoods. We don't go to the places where people are all got it all together. We go to places where people are in need. And that's one of the things I love about our church is we're constantly looking for needs. That's what Pastor Marco has been doing since the beginning, right? He shared a little bit about that on Sunday. But in our discipleship group, it came up that, you know, there's this, this complex, and some of you may know about it, it was condemned. Just last fall, this complex was completely condemned. In fact, uh, just a few weeks ago, I was out with Pastor Marco at Loma Lindwood, which those, those apartments by themselves are, are pretty an interesting place. The, the, the things that are going on there are unbelievable. The trash, the homelessness, the gang violence, people are dying. Do you know that? They, they're actually, in every apartment, they have drugs now to help people if they OD on fentanyl because there's been so many deaths going on. Every week, someone's dying there. And so this apartment complex came to our attention. In fact, while I was there in the parking lot, um, not too far from one of these complexes on Loma Linwood, a man drove up to me and he said, hey, you guys from the way? He said, I said, yeah, we're from the way. He said, you guys got to get down to Fourth and Arrowhead. You've got to come down there. I said, are you living there? He said, yeah, I'm living there. And the building's condemned. I said, you're living in a condemned building? How many people were there? He said, hundreds. And so our team went this last Monday, just a couple days ago, and visited. And they visited a couple times. And they knocked on doors. And they found hundreds of people that are desperate for help. And this is what I love. I love the fact that when we see a need, we're not going to just walk by it. We're not going to forget it. We're not going to overlook them. And so our, even one of the people that was there on Monday was Pastor Joe. You know what broke Pastor Joe's heart? The Sunday before that, just the day before that, he had done a baby dedication, child dedication for a family. And when he walked into this complex, a little girl ran up to him who he had just dedicated the day before. Pastor Joe, I'm so glad to see you. Thanks for visiting where I live. But Pastor Marco, Pastor Joe, our leadership team said, this cannot continue. And Pastor Marco was reminded of something that happened. This complex happens to be right next to one of the first, the very first buildings that we had as the Way World Outreach at 4th and Arrowhead. And at that time, God began to give him a vision that we are going to adopt. We're going to take over that complex. It's going to become the Way World Outreach's complex. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna refurbish it. We're going to take care of it. And that's going to happen this year, guys. We're going to take care of that place. And this is, an, this is the thing I love. When you give your tithes and offerings here, you can be guaranteed it's going to go to a good cause. It's going to go to the extension of the gospel. It's going to go to loving people and meeting needs somewhere in the world. And that's one of the things that we're going to do together as a church. You know, we could you know, go out there with baker's meals one by one, but together as a church, we can take over that whole complex. We can put build, that building back the way it's supposed to be. I actually had a couple pictures. I don't know if they got them back in the team, but this, this is a place that we're going to go in, and we're going to make some changes. We're going to make an impact. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 19, 17, something very powerful. It says, let's have that, this is a, just a few pictures. This is actually from KTLA News. They went in there with the news crew and they couldn't believe what they found. But I wanna show you Proverbs 19, 17. Proverbs 19, 17 says, if you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord and he will repay you. So this is the amazing thing about God. First of all, you know when you give, that you're gonna have an impact, that you're gonna make a difference in someone's life, and you have the blessing of knowing, I'm making a difference in the world, I'm helping someone, I'm loving them, I'm meeting their needs, but it doesn't stop there. Because God says, oh, don't even worry about what you're giving, because that's on me. I'm taking that as a loan for me, and I'm gonna repay it, I'm gonna bless you, I'm gonna give you more, so that you can continue to be a blessing. So it's a double blessing when we give. And that's the promise of God. And so today, I want to encourage you guys. You can be confident of this. There's going to be a blessing for you to give from those that receive. And there's going to be a blessing on your life as God repays what you give. And so today, there's three ways to give. You can give with the Wayworld Outreach app, which is my favorite way to give. I love to give my tithes and offerings through that because I can give anytime, any place. You can also give on the website, theway.gives, and you've obviously seen our ushers walking through. If you'd like to give in person, you'd like to give cash or check, you can grab one of these envelopes and visit one of our kiosks. If you're watching online, you can come in Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. The worship team is going to come right now, and they're going to sing one more song. And as they do, 
I want to encourage you to give. Give with confidence those tithes and offerings, knowing that they're going to amazing causes here in our community and that God's going to repay. Let's pray for our offering as we get prepared to take it, to, to, to give. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to give our tithes and offerings, knowing that you're going to use them to extend your kingdom, to bring the gospel, to love people, to meet needs. We are so grateful that we get to be a part of a church that will not pass up a need, that will not overlook it, God. And we thank you, God, also for the promise that when we give, it's going to have an impact not only on those that we give to, but to us, God, that you're going to come in and repay whatever we give. And so we thank you, God, for that promise tonight. We pray that blessing and that, uh, that double blessing would fall on each person tonight as they give. In Jesus' name, amen. So God bless you as you give. Our worship team is going to sing one final song. We want you to worship God through your giving of your tithes and offerings right now. Amen. Let's continue worshiping in our giving. How many will declare that as they look over their life, God has been way better. The good always outweighs the bad. Will you declare that tonight? Hallelujah. goodness is chasing after you and, that, and that's all perspective right that God and that when I say it's all perspective you got to be super careful how you think about yourself and how you think about God because it'll become your reality and the reality is is that God is chasing after you before you ever thought about thinking about him not to judge you, not to condemn you, but to restore you, to heal you, to set you free, to make it brand new. Does anybody need a brand new start? Jesus is not your problem. He's your answer. There's a Bible verse that says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And for someone that's here for the first time, you might not clearly understand what that means. But let's say you were drowning and you just said help. What he's saying, everyone that asks for help will get the help. Everyone that asks for the help will get a supernatural intervention. You might be in a situation that the doctors can't fix, you can't fix, time can't fix. But when you get there, you're at the end of the rope, God can fix it. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord 
we'll be saved, we'll be made whole, we'll be set free, we'll be forgiven, and be given a gift of eternal life. And, and I love what God does because salvation is not earned, it's a gift that we receive by believing or by faith. Salvation, eternal life, forgiveness, freedom, healing is not earned. You receive it by believing and receiving. Your part is easy. You believe he does the miracle. Does anybody need a breakthrough, a miracle? Come on, it could be your finances. It could be your emotions. It could be get, getting healed of past hurt and trauma. So many people die with their trauma and, and they make bad decisions based on their pain. Because what, what, we, what we do usually, because we were created, I, I want you to understand, you were created to be happy. You were created to be fulfilled. You were created to be satisfied and you know it. And since you don't have it, you search for it. And you might search for it in a relationship. You might search for it in a thing. And this is what we do. We self-medicate our pain. But you, could, you can medicate your pain all day long, but it's not going to set you free from it. But I got good news here today. The answer to your pain is healing and freedom and restoration. Jesus can heal you of your tra past trauma, pain, hurt. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on. There's sometimes you got to just uh, okay, I received that for me. Now, when, when God does something for you, there's a scripture, and we're going to get into teaching right now. But when he does something for you, he says this. Freely, freely you've received. Freely give. How cool is that, that when God gives you something, he's saying, I gave it to you freely, and what I want you to do is give it to others. You know what that means? What I give to you, I turn into a ministry. What I give to you, I empower you to give others. What he's saying is, when I give it to you, I don't give it in limited form, I give it in abundant form, and I give it in unlimited form, that when I give it to you, you can keep on giving it, and giving it, and giving it, and giving it, come on. And it never runs out, because you're not the source, he's the source. One more praise to God, come on. I'm not only, come on, receive it tonight, but I'm getting a position to give it. Isn't that great? Because once you receive the wisdom of the Lord, you got it. And you know what that means? You could counsel for the rest of your life with that wisdom you received. I love that. If you've been healed, I want you to understand, if you've been healed by any, even a headache, you have a ministry to heal headaches. You got to know that because whatever you receive, you could actually what? Give it. Right now, your problem, your difficulty is only setting you up for a distribution of God's presence, His power, and He's going to turn it into a ministry. Give God some praise. It's going to turn out for good. This is good. We're, we're going we're gonna to talk tonight. We're going to continue talking about leadership. And, and you might be thinking, what is the Bible? What is leadership in the Bible? What, I mean, what does that have to do one with, with the other? And I, I'm going to tell you this, everything. Everything's about leadership because God is the ultimate leader. He's the authority. He's the power. He's the creator. And when you follow him, you're following a leader. And if you're not following him, you're following another leader. Jesus said this, you cannot serve two masters. What he was saying is you're going to serve a leader but you just can't serve both of them at the same time. Either you're going to serve me or you're going to serve something else. One leader is going to lead you to a fulfilled, abundant life. The other one is going to lead you to being ripped off, being disappointed, dissatisfied, addicted, angry, upset, depressed, unfulfilled. And the reality is you can make all kinds of money and still be jacked up. That means you have success with a lot of sorrow. And there's somebody here right now that doesn't have a lot of resources, but they have some peace because they followed the right leader. And God is saying, how about let's get both of them. Let me bless you so you can be a blessing and let me give you my peace. Come on. Let me give you my victory. Let me give you my spirit so you can go out there and for the rest of your life be a distribution, a, a distribution center for the kingdom of heaven. I, I love that. 
I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. There was a day I was standing in the line because I needed a breakthrough. Come on. I needed someone to pray for me. But there was a day that I became the line and now people come to me because I received it and I could give it. God is saying he's going to turn you into a distribution center of his blessing. Give God one more praise. It's ready to shift. This world needs Christian Godly, successful, influential leader. Say with me, I'm a leader. Say with me again, I'm a leader. And understand, you're a leader whether you realize it or not. You're just a good leader or a bad leader, that's all. And if you're following the bad leader, you're becoming a bad leader. And tonight, God is going to give you an opportunity. Hey, he's going to say, hey, follow me. I'm the best leader in the universe. Just follow me. And I guarantee if you follow me, it's going to lead to victory in your life. Not some victories. Every time it's going to lead to victory. Serve the right leader, you get the right results. Right? Come on. Change the, come on. Change the coaches, you start winning. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. Speak to us today about leadership. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We don't need a long prayer. I'm sure you prayed before we got here. I want to just define what leadership is real quick, and then we're going to talk about how to become an influential leader. Uh, leadership, let's define it first, is the ability and skill to influence yourself, people, teams, organizations, to take the necessary actions to succeed. Uh, a leader's responsibility is, is to develop, I mean, a leader develops an ability and a skill. Now, leadership is a skill. It's a people skill. Say it with me. It's a people skill. So we're leading people. And then after, and this is how it works, you learn, this is what you do. You, you lead yourself or you become leadable. Then you've earned the right as you've allowed yourself to be led to a victory, led to success, led to a breakthrough. You've earned the right to lead people, teams, and organizations to success. And the idea of leading is getting people to take action. Say it with me. Action. That means that the neighborhood drug dealer, uh, the YouTube influencers, um, your, your children's friends can actually have more influence than you do. And when they have more influence than you do, they get them to take action that they probably shouldn't be taking and no matter what you do, you can't seem to stop them from taking the wrong action. And there's a reason they've submitted to another leader. The good news is that even if that's the case in this place, I got good news for you. You could learn how to become a more effective and influential leader. Isn't that good news? Nothing's going to change in our society unless we raise up leaders that people are willing to submit to. Even as a Christian, you have a responsibility to lead people to the Lord. Lead people off the streets into wholeness. Lead people out of discouragement. Lead people out of depression. Lead people out of bondage. Lead people out of poverty. Lead people out of failure. But they need a leader to lead them out. Now, without a leader, they stay in it. This apartment complex it's not going to get any better until leadership changes. This apartment complex is not going to fix itself. And this is the reality. The people in the complex can't fix it. If they could have, they would have. What they need is some leadership that goes in there with vision, with love, with care, that's able to move them to a place of action to take them from where they're at to where they should be. You guys understand that? I remember when... when as I began to learn leadership, I learned the foundation of leadership in the church. And the reason I learned, uh, I said I learned the found leadership in the church, I was, I'm going to give you a secret. The highest levels of leaders in the world are volunteer leaders. And the reason they're volunteer leaders, because people follow, not because they're following for a paycheck, they're following because they trust the leadership. You could be a leader in your company and not necessarily be a great leader because you just have a position and you could flaunt 
your position and your power over your people and threaten them. If you don't show up, I'm going to dock your pay. If you don't show up, I'm going to fire you. If you don't show up, you could threaten them. And, you're, and you get them to change their behavior based on your threat. But understand, you're not a real leader. You're just a boss. And that kind of leadership cannot change a community. That kind of leadership, you can't lead your children with it. That kind of leadership, men, you can't lead your wife with that. You got to get to the point that you develop the skill to build trust in the people that you're leading that they would willingly submit come on, to your leadership and give you permission to lead them willingly and they're grateful because they know this, I know you care about me and I know that if I follow you, I'm going to end up in a better place. You got to know that. So we're building trust in neighborhoods all the time and, and, and the idea is building trust. Say it with me, building trust. So Jesus promised that if we followed him, he would teach us the greatest skill anyone could ever learn, and that is leadership. In Matthew 4, 19, it says this. Jesus called out to them, and he said, come follow me. What was he saying? I want to be your leader. Will you follow me? There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, understand, there's people in your life right now saying, hey, follow me. And, and, and some of them are worthy of following because they've succeeded. They're actually the place you want to be. And you'd be smart to follow them because they're going to lead you to a better place. They're going to help you take action that you don't want. You don't have the discipline to take action on yet. They're going to begin to train you. They're going to change your thinking, your perspective. And when that happens, you're going to start doing things you've never done and getting results you've never had. Leadership is a good thing when it's good leadership. It's really great to submit and learn from great leadership. I'm going to get that. Now, I know some of you distrust leadership because you've had so many bad leaders over you, but don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Just because you've had bad leadership doesn't mean there's not good leadership. Right? Just because you had bad leadership in your last organization, bad leadership in your home, bad leadership with your mom and dad, bad leadership with the last church you came from, don't get to the point that you mistrust leadership so much that you stay stuck. Because understand this, when God is ready to move you to another level, he's raising up leaders and he exposes you to leaders that can teach you, that can train you, that can invest in you and take you to the next level of life, which means when you get to the next level, that means failure turns in to victory. Come on. Bondage turns in to freedom. Poverty turns in to wealth. What God is saying, I want to take you from where you're at, come on, to where you should be. Does anybody want to be led there? Now, if you could be led there, you can lead others there. Say this, teachable. Remain teachable. Jesus called out to them, come follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. That was Jesus' first call. He goes, follow me. And I'm going to show you how to reach people, influence people. I'm going to show you how to become a leader, how to change people's lives. That word show means I'm going to make you ready. I'm going to prepare you. I'm going to develop you. I'm going to instruct you. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to lead you and show you how to develop a skill on how to reach and win people over. There's a scripture that says, those who win souls or make friends are wise. This is what it's saying. If people don't like you, stop saying that's the way you are. This is what's happening. You have bad people skills. And if you have bad people skills, I do know this. You're not following Jesus properly because he's the master of people skills. He's such a great influencer that he did ministry for three years without YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, worldwide web, web. You know, he did it without that, without marketing, without Facebook. He did it without, and still he has the most followers today, 2.4 billion followers that claim to be, come on, people that claim to be followers of Jesus Christ, a leader with people skills. And how does he do it? His followers have those skills. Because our responsibility is to lead people to a better place. Come on, good leaders lead people to a what? That's not always the case 
in our leadership today because a lot of leaders are leading themselves to a better place and can care less about the crowd and can care less about the people. But that's not God leadership. God leadership is servant leadership. That means I am living so people, come on, could go from the place they're at to the place they should be. Your success is the success of the people around you. Right? But you'll never do this. You'll never develop people and help them succeed without personally being successful. It's impossible. When you become a person that makes a difference and can turn organizations around, turn people's lives around, you'll, there'll always be a demand on your life and there'll always be a following because people need help. I'm gonna get that. I remember learning leadership in the church. I learned leadership in the church. I had to learn how to build teams, build a volunteer base in the church. So when I went into the business world, I, I, and as a young man, I didn't realize how far ahead I was from, I'm just way ahead of all the leadership that was there. And we're, we're talking about people 10 years, 20 years in, in, in business. And the mindset that I had was like, whoa, they're making a lot of leadership mistakes. They were screaming on the top of our lungs, kiss, cussing everybody out. Um, they were being, there were, they were leaders that were unfaithful to their wives and flaunting it and, and lying and cheating and, and conniving and hustling. And, I, and I'm looking like, that's, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. But this is what happened. Because I knew leadership, I began to succeed where I was at and I began to influence those people above me even. And this is what happened. The people above me started asking me something like this. Will you teach me what you know? Will you teach me what you know? You know when you, when you become a leader, people start asking you to mentor them. Come on, does anybody want to get some people asking, can you mentor me, can you show me? But no one's going to ask you to show them something that you've not mastered yourself. They're, they're not going to say, hey, can you show me how to overcome anger when you're totally emotionally illiterate? Show me how to overcome anger the way you overcome anger that you're always angry. When they see your patience, when they would get angry, they say, how'd you do that? Because if it was me, I'd just have blown up on that person. Let me tell you something. I learned how to forgive. I learned how to let, let things go. And I, I know where people are at. And I'm here to help that person too. Come on, are there any leaders in here that, that want to become a person that's not driven by emotions, but you're driven by principles and you're learning how to have some people skills. People can't push your buttons because you've eliminated the buttons. Amen? All right. I'll show you a fish for people. Now, leadership is influence and influence is trust. So, someone say influence is what? Trust. trust. That means, the, I, I, another way to say it is that the skill of, inf, of, of leadership is being able to build trust with people. That's all it is. So the, the more they trust me, the more they're willing to take action or the will, more they're willing to follow my lead. Someone say, follow the lead. Follow the lead. So you as a man, I say, man, you can't quote scripture and say, I'm the man of the house, you better submit. Well, scripture, I know it's scripture, but that's not how you want to lead your home. You want to lead your home by earning the respect of your children and earning the respect of your wife that she would say, I want to be like you. There's not a woman in this place that has no problem submitting to a man, come on, a man of God, a man that does it right, a man that's being led, come on, by love, is being led as a servant, come on, to serve his family. There's not a, come on, the, every woman in this place, give me that man, I'll submit to him. But to demand submission, when you haven't earned their trust, it's not leadership. Leadership is not position. Leadership is permission. Someone say, leadership is not position. Leadership is what? Permission. That means you're a true leader when people give you the permission to lead them. And they'll only give you the permission to lead them when they trust you. 
Now, as a leader, you must get to, if you want to be a real strong leader, you must get to the point that you're unoffendable. Say, so why? Why would, I, why would I have to be unoffendable? I, you know, I'm from Fontana, South Fontana. There's no such thing as Christian gangsters. Stop trying to be one. We got too many ghetto Christians. I mean, you're good in here until you go to like, they mess up your order and then you get all ghetto. Like, uh, 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 uh,
If they don't trust you, they won't buy from you. If they won't, if you don't trust you, even if you have the best information, they won't hear you. If, if they don't trust you, they won't recommend anybody to you. There's no referrals. If they don't trust you, 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 you can't help them if they don't trust you. So the, the idea of building trust and biting your tongue and loving people and making sure that you're, in, you're living to make sure that they get ahead and they get that message is very, very important because if you don't build trust, you have no leadership. Amen? Are you still with me? So how to become an influential leader? I, I, I'm just telling you, I, I think we need a whole year on this subject here. This whole Bible is about leadership. How to become an influential leader. Number one, and I, we'll probably just stay right here. <laughs> but it's important because it don't matter. Understand this, it don't matter how much info I give you, it's what you apply. Right? I've given you enough already to go home and work on stuff right now. Oh my gosh. No wonder. You know why? Because so many people are interested in climbing the ladder, but they're not interested in being personally developed. Like, I want the ladder position because I want the pay, but I'm not interested in the responsibility of leading people and personally developing. And God's not interested in you climbing a ladder without personal development because all that's going to happen, you climbed it and, and you talk yourself. You're a good talker. You got yourself the job. But if your character's jacked up, what's going to happen? You're going to get a demotion just as fast as you got a promotion. Because whatever you're talking yourself into, understand, you're not going to be able to keep it because you can only keep with your character can hold. Right? So as I learned leadership, um, opportunities came up. Opportunities come up for the prepared. Say it with me. Opportunities come up for the They started, the, 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 the company started buying stores. And what they were saying is, we're buying stores that are, that are failing, that are bankrupt stores, and we need turnaround leaders to turn the store around. What God wants you to do is become a turnaround leader. Allow him to turn your life around and then become a person that can turn other people's life around. God does not want you surviving and barely making it and just hoping that for the next three months you stay a Christian. Some of you need to get delivered from a spirit of backsliding. Your, your goals are too small. I just, I hope I don't smoke weed this way. I, I just hope, I, I hope. Hope I don't go back to crack and fentanyl. Hope I can say no to that, that woman at work. She's so juicy. I'm just laying it down the way I need to lay it down for you. Oh, man, I get you, Pastor, and I know where you're coming from. But that's the idea. You're barely surviving. You can't lead nobody because you're barely making it. You're not acting like more than a conqueror. God wants you to settle that. Die to your old life so you can become a turnaround leader. Get a turnaround, and for the rest of your life, you distribute turnarounds. Personal turnaround leads to teams to... Teams being turned around, organizational turned around. Come on, cities can be turned around, nations can be turned around if we have the right leaders. Come on, are there any leaders here that are saying, I want to become a turnaround leader? That's why details matter. Now, I had to learn how to become a turnaround leader, and I had to be able to turn my, allow God to lead me through his principles, to lead me as I followed him. Because if I don't let him influence me, I can't have his influence. So the level of influence I allow God to have on my life is a level of depth of influence and authority I can walk in. There's something powerful about somebody, somebody that doesn't have a form of godliness, but they're actually godly. The Bible says there's going to be a group of people that call themselves Christians. I'm a Christian by name but you're not Christian by lifestyle. And it's your lifestyle. Come on. The one you're submitted to. Submit to God. They resist devils. Come on. And they're going to flee. But stop trying to resist devils that you're submitted to. 
Right, so that you guys, you guys understand it. So become a turnaround leader. I need to be led to turn around, led to breakthrough. Then I can become a turnaround and breakthrough leader. Now, once I become a turnaround and breakthrough leader, there is now a demand on my life. Crowds will follow turnaround leaders. Jesus never had a problem getting a crowd. If Jesus had a problem, he had too many people following him. Why would they follow him? Because having an encounter with Jesus, having an encounter with his teachings, having an encounter with his leadership, having an encounter with his wisdom, having an encounter with his power meant turnaround for my personal life. That means Jesus brings value. And what God is saying, will you allow me to turn your life around and bring, come on, and I want your life to bring value to the hurting and the broken. Give God some praise that God wants to build your value to people. Right? So the more I grow, the more value I could bring. The more wisdom I have, the more value I could bring to people. What that means, you're valuable to God no matter what. He died for you. But you're not valuable to people no matter what. You're valuable to God in the sense that he's your, if you believe in him, you're a son and daughter. He loves you so much. But you're not valuable for the kingdom until you grow. Because your value is the influence and the impact you can make on people's lives. If no one wants to follow you, your leadership has no value. Salt with no flavor. Who wants that? Anybody like some salt? I do. Like once in a while, I, oh man, I sound like I'm so in trouble. Okay, well, Lisa's here, it don't matter. Lisa will make something. I'm going, this doesn't have enough salt. <laughs> and you know what that means? We've got to bring some salt out to bring out the flavor flame. <laughs> There's somebody here right now. Come on, God's ready to make you salty. And what he's saying, I'm going to make you impactful when you submit to me. Come on, is there anybody right now that's saying, God, turn my life around for good so I could be a turnaround leader? So now, when I became a turnaround leader, when they bought these stores, guess who they're asking to go to these stores and turn the stores around? They're saying, Marco, we want you to be part of the team that turns the store around from bankruptcy to success. I was able to turn my, God, and I said, through God, turn my life around. Then they gave me a team, and I turned that team around. And now they're saying, okay, now take over a store and turn a store around. This is exactly how it happens. You get personal turnaround, personal victories. Then you get respond, then you're allowed responsibility to help a person or two get a breakthrough. And once you have a legacy that not me, come on, a reputation that Lives are being transformed by what you're learning and what you're inputting and how you're serving them and you're bringing them value. People are going to start saying, I met up with her and I'll tell you, I was depressed. I was lost. I don't know where I was going, but I talked to her. She's been mentoring me and my life is not the same that it used to be. She's God use her, God use him to turn my life around. And God is ready to use the church to turn this world upside down. Get ready for revival in your life. And let's get ready to cause revival in this world. It's going to start with your family. It's going to start with you. It's going to start in the church. God is saying, I'm making you a turnaround leader. So I remember one of the stores that they asked me to go to was a store in Moreno Valley. And when I got there, it was one of the worst stores in, that sto in, 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 in California. The store was going bankrupt. They were selling like 50 cars a month for a, a big uh, new car store. It'll go bankrupt, and it did. And I remember going in there for my first day. All they did was 
drop me off. <laughs> These were the instructions from the owner. Turn it around. I'll call you on Sunday for two minutes and I want to hear your progress. Only conversation I had with the owner. Once a week for two minutes. And I just tell him the progress we've made. That's it. He didn't want to hear excuses. He didn't want to, he goes, You're, I'm paying you a lot of money to turn the store around. I don't want to hear nothing else. You understand? I'm paying you what? This is what happens when you become a turnaround leader, everything goes up. How many understand? Everything starts going up. Because the organization is starting to succeed. Come on. Everything starts going up. How many understand? The more value you bring to a company, the more value they're going to they're gonna see in you and the more they're willing to pay you. I know I'm breaking this down like, oh my, what about, it's not a lot about money. Well, I know it's not all about money, but you do need money to go to the store. <laughs> you can't like go to the, your car payment and say, hey guys, I'm living by faith. <laughs> I need you guys to, <laughs> this kingdom. They're going to think you're crazy, call the police on you, and repossess your car. <laughs> you, I mean, don't get so spiritual that you think you don't need money. Don't get so spiritual that you don't think you need to be a leader. Don't get so spiritual that you don't need to think that you need to develop. Because, see, God, come on, God wants to make all this thing practical, that you're making a difference here on earth, here in your family, that lives are practically being changed because you're being changed by the power of God and the power of God not only changing you through miracles, he's changing your thinking so you can help others. You guys understand that? So and then I go in and with the new store with old mentalities. New stores with what? My, your responsibility is you don't complain about your city, you don't complain about your family, you don't complain about, you come on, you don't complain about your neighbors. You're a world changer, a people changer, you changer, you're an influence. You don't complain how dark it is, bring a light. You change atmospheres. You change people's lives. You change their thinking. And when you change their thinking, come on, you change their results. Come on, you change their thinking. You change their results. But before God can use you to change their thinking, he has to be able to change your thinking. Isn't that why we come to church? Come on, is anybody thinking, shifting a little bit right now? Come on, is anybody thinking, shifting a little bit right now? We're just barely started. I didn't even get to point one yet. So now I come in. I start speaking at a higher level. They've never heard the words I'm speaking because no one in that store has ever had the perspectives, the perspective I have. I've been influenced by the greatest leader in the universe, the creator of the universe. And when I go in there, I go in with high thinking. So I'd go in there and say, guys, I want you to understand I'm here. I don't know it all. But us working together, we could actually take the store to a whole nother level. And when we take the store to another level, all it means is you're going to get paid more. You're going to be able to take more to your family. And I know every one of you are here to support your family. And my responsibility is to help you make more sales so you can make more money, so you can take it home to your family and help you get results you've never gotten in your life. It's not going to be easy. I need your help. But we can do this together. There's going to be some changes here. And I want you to I, I, and understand, you're not going to understand all of it. But there's one thing, my, my responsibility is to earn your respect, earn your trust. And I'm going to do everything I can to help you succeed. I'm not expecting you to trust me straight off the top. i got to prove myself to you. But that, I know it's more than words. You've heard people say things. But we're getting get ready to go to work. And I will tell you this. None of you here will outwork me. I'm going to outwork every single one of you. And by the time we're done, we're going to be one of the top stores in the country. We're not going to be a, we're not just going to turn the store around. We're going to the top. And they look at you like, what? No way. 
and I know you have a hard time believing it, but I've already seen it, and I've already been part of it. So I'm talking from experience mentally. I've seen turn around, and what I, we've turned that store around. We're gonna turn this store around. We're gonna all work together. And my job now is to train them, teach them what I know. I'm not teaching them what I don't know. I'm teaching them what I've learned. I'm helping them get the breakthroughs and areas I've gotten breakthroughs in. I've helped them overcome the objections and the challenges and the obstacles that they faced, that I faced. And because I faced them and I wrestled with them. Understand, you're never gonna grow without wrestling with your old thoughts, the challenges, the difficulties. Stop complaining about how tough life is and learn how to work with that kind of stuff because all those things are building your experience. Come on, they're building your wisdom. Your, you, come on, they're br building your character. They're building your tenacity. They're building your endurance. So stop complaining. You're just going in school so you could graduate, so you can help other people graduate. So now because I graduated and I learned how to succeed and I learned how to, I saw a turnaround, I could be part of a turnaround. I understand that. This is what we do. And we're going to do that in cities all across the United States of America. But, but let, that's big. But I want to start with this. How about you get in a personal turnaround? How about you get it? How about you make it up your mind that what, whatever field that you're in, we're going to talk about this another time. How about whatever field that you're in, Stop looking at it as a, a job and start becoming an expert in that field. I'm going to become a doctor in this thing, a master in this, an expert in this. I'm no longer going to be clocking in and clocking out. I'm in school. I'm going to outwork everybody. I'm going to outstudy everybody. Come on. I'm going to show up early. I'm going to do everything extra because I'm training to be a leader. I'm not just here for me. I'm here for my family. Come on. I'm here for the employees. I'm here for the company. I'm ready to turn this thing around. And some of you, because you're faithful there, God's going to make you an owner of your own business. But you'll never become an owner of your own business if you can't succeed in the business you're in right now. Stop complaining. Start showing up. Get a job and stop quitting. Make this your home church and get through all the drama. You got to stop going from church to church, from thing to thing, from relationship to relationship, because what you're doing is you're, this is what's happening. You're dropping out of your process. And every time you drop out, you don't graduate. And when you drop out, you blame somebody. And God says, stop blaming and let's stick with it. Let's get grounded. Let's start flourishing. Let's overcome. Let's get a turnaround. Come on, let's get some breakthrough. Let's learn how to do it so we can help some other people do it. Let's follow Jesus to the day we die. Give God one final praise. He's a good God. Christian, can you close this out? Where's Christian at? Here, right here, right here. All right, we're going to close it out. I, I didn't even get to point number one. Okay, we'll get there, though. Come on, just keep it going. Well, okay. We'll pick it up next week. Come on. Next Wednesday. Someone say next Wednesday. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you just three keys or three ways to become an influential leader. That's next week. I promise you. Not, wait, I don't promise nothing, but I will tell you. I will get to point number one, though. I guarantee you that. Come on. How many want to learn this stuff? How many learned something today already that you could teach? Come on, you could teach somebody. Let's learn leadership. Bring, come on, bring your employees. Bring people here. We're going to teach leadership. God bless. Praise Love you. Lord. Come on, let's give God praise if you receive that word today. Someone say, I am a leader. You guys can remain seated. Go ahead and remain seated. <clears throat> Thank you, though, for standing. That was cool. Um, if you can, just go to remain in your seat. We're going to kindly ask that before we give this opportunity for souls to be saved, um, we just won't leave. We just respect this moment so that somebody around you can receive this chance to respond to the call. Right now is, is, is probably the most important decision that someone will ever make. And that's the decision on where they're gonna spend their eternal life. And how, how, how do I know if I'm gonna go to heaven or hell? Well, God makes it very clear. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't make it complicated for any one of us to understand. God made a way for all of us to be saved 
to be forgiven and to be set free. There's good news. But before there's good news, there's some bad news. The bad news is this, we've all sinned. How many know that that's true? We've all fallen short, we've lied, cheated, stolen, lusted. We've done things that have been immorally wrong. We've, we've fallen short of the mark. The Bible goes on to say this, that the price for our sin is death. In other words, what we owe because of the sins that we've committed is eternal separation from God forever. Our eternal destination, the moment we decide to sin, the first time we've sinned, we changed course now and now we are heading to eternal destruction. There's no amount of good we can do to make up for the sin we've committed. Can't be a good enough person or do a good, uh, 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 an amount of good deeds to make up for it. There's no amount we can reach, even for one sin. So the question then is, what do I do? If I've already sinned, and there's no amount of good I can do to make up for it, where's the hope? The hope is in this. God loves you so much that he sent his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And he sent Jesus, not while you were trying to get better, but he gave, he's presenting Jesus to you even in what may feel like your lowest moment and your darkest state. Jesus is here for you. So what can I do to be saved? Here's how. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross and paid a horrible price, something he did not owe because he loves you. But Jesus didn't just die, he resurrected from the dead so that he can defeat death and your sin forever. Now whoever believes in him and calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. To be saved tonight, to be forgiven of your sin, put your faith in Jesus and repent of your sins, which means this, turn around from your old life. Change your mind on the way you've been living and give your life to Jesus tonight. And I promise you, when you give your life to Jesus tonight, your sins will be washed away. You will be made brand new. And Jesus will begin to give you the life that he initially had in store for you. So that you no longer live under the curse of death. But that's all washed away. And God gives you instead his life for eternity. That can begin tonight. Tonight can begin that decision for the first time. So I wanna ask you, everyone all over this room, if you're ready to make a decision tonight to follow Jesus, if you wanna be forgiven of your sin, if you wanna to repent today and give your life to Jesus, then I wanna ask at the count of three, all over this room, raise your hand as a declaration to say, I want to put my, I wanna put my faith in Jesus tonight. One, two, Three, all over this room, hands up, all over this room. I see you over here. I see you, th uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Anybody else in the back? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Anybody else? Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. 17, 17, come on. Come on, let's give God praise for the 17 souls that are making a decision to follow Jesus. We're proud of all of you. Can we do this really quick? Can we all stand to our feet right now? And for everybody that raised your hand, all 17 of you, from the front to the very back row, could you do me a favor? Give us the honor of being able to pray with you. Would you make your way out of your seat right now and just come forward? Come forward and we're gonna congratulate you and pray with you. And we wanna help you take your next step. And as they do, church, let's clap, let's cheer, let's encourage them. This is a big moment for everybody that's making a decision to follow Jesus. That's so good. You know, Pastor just said something so key right now. He said, great leadership starts with following a great leader. There's no greater leader that we can follow than Jesus Christ. And I know we may, we may brush it off as just a light thing, but the, the fact is this, and this is a fact, 
the greatest lead leader ever to touch down on the face of this earth is Jesus Christ. There's no question. There's no question about it. Today, let's make the greatest decision we can ever make by following the greatest leader ever. His name is Jesus. He laid his life down for you. There's no greater act of leadership than we've ever seen. So let's follow Jesus. If you need any prayer at all, you can come forward as well. If you need prayer for healing, if you need prayer to stand in the gap for something, uh, come on up. We will, would love to pray with you. But for everyone that came up right here, could you just look at me for a second? Everyone that just came forward, we want to say this. We are so proud of you, and we, we're going to help you along this whole process. We have a class that's called Holy Warriors. And in this class of Holy Warriors, we're going to train you. We're going to disciple you. We're going to build you up. The person in front of you, they're going to pray with you right now, but they're also going to get you signed up for this class. It launches Sunday and Tuesday night. This is going to be the greatest decision you can make, being discipled and learning how to follow, learning how to read your word and pray. Your life is never going to be the same again. Are you guys ready for change? Are we ready? Awesome. We might need a couple more uh, altar workers. Uh, Pastor Reston, could you, could you could come in? That would be awesome. Thank you so much. Let's... Let's pray right now. We need, we need one more gentleman here. If we have an altar leader, a gentleman here, we can pray with him. Thank you so much. Let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross and raising from the dead so that I can be saved. Right now, I repent of my sins and I put my faith in you. I surrender everything. Be the Lord and the Savior of my life. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit so that from this day forward, I'll never be the same again. My life is yours. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, church. Can we give God praise for all the souls that are giving their life to Jesus today? We love you, church. Don't forget this. This Friday night, men and women are going to be here at 7 p.m. This Sunday is the launch of Marriage Challenge. Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa will be answering questions live this Sunday. It's going to be powerful. Invite, invite, invite as many people as you can. Let's spread the word. We love you. We'll see you uh, Friday, and we'll see you Sunday at 9 or 11 a.m. If you need any prayer, you can come forward. We'd love to pray with you. God bless you. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. God bless you.